love, sex, desire, drama, lovers, and the others. <laughs> and we talk about it all here on Relationship. Hi, and welcome to Relationship Rhetoric. I'm your host, Unapologetically Angela. And on today's show, our special guest is me, myself, and I. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, well, I just recently for my birthday, about- I decided that I would give some of my uh, supporters an opportunity to send in questions and either ask me for advice or share something with me or ask me to share something with them. It doesn't matter. So in my hand, I have questions that I have received and we're going to go to the first question. Do you believe in love at first sight? And what about unconditional love? Love at first sight is kind of a tricky thing because I believe in connections that people make when they first see each other. But um, I guess it takes a second to really realize if that's love or is that lust or is it one of those momentarily connections. Um, unconditional love, I, I would like to believe that it exists. But I think we as humans have a tendency to put conditions on things whether we realize it or not. So... I would like to believe that it does exist. You will soon be an empty nester. How do you think that will affect your dating? I don't think being an empty nester is really going to affect me in dating because my perspective of how I deal with my home will remain the same. You know, even with my children not being here, I'm a private person. So being out and about and things of that nature, I get out. And then the majority of the time I am home. So um, it may create a little more freedom. I'm not quite sure. I try to be as comfortably free as I can be now. But I really don't know. I'm going to miss having little people in the house to take care of. So that's going to be different. Okay. What does your freedom look like in a committed relationship? Freedom in a committed relationship means that I can freely be myself. I can freely express my opinion, um, have the feelings that I have, be able to communicate the way I feel, um, and have fun and have a partner that uh, has that same amount of freedom so we could uh, joke and be open about things that we're feeling, things that may make us feel uncomfortable, things that we may want to experience. Um Communication and being honest with how you're truly feeling is important. So I think with that level of freedom in any committed relationship, you can evolve together. Okay. How has your libido transformed from your teenage years to now? (laughs) Well... I was an awkward teenager, so sex was nowhere near on my mind, (laughs) by no means. Um, I was just trying to fit in or try to feel pretty every now and then or try not to be noticed and things of that nature. So, no, I didn't think about sex until I left and went off to college. And then it still wasn't a focal point on my mind. I think as I've gotten older, I've become more comfortable with my body and... um, Again, because I do really believe in committed relationships, it gives you an opportunity to be comfortable and see how far you and your body and that level of freedom will allow you to go. So I have made (laughs) strides as far as that's concerned, because as a teenager, young 20s or whatever, sex was not a thing or important. Now, keep that in mind, even that I had my first child at 19. (laughs) 
still. It wasn't a focal point. It was just something that I felt because everybody was doing it. It was something that, man, what am I missing out? Is it because I don't this or this, this, that, and the other? So, but being in tune with my body and really even knowing what a libido is, I was good and grown. Has there been a systematic religious conflict with how you were raised and how you are now? If yes, how did you resolve that conflict? Conflict, conflict, conflict. I, I don't know if there has been a conflict, but I know that people misunderstand and people pass judgments about what they think you believe or what they think you don't believe. Um, I grew up in the church. Um, I was very, very, very active in church. I did announcements. I sung in the choir. I did Baptist conventions and things. I was very, very active. So church was a very important part of my life. My parents were adamant that I was active and I used the skills that I have to give praise and honor to God. That's, you know, that's where we were. Um, I know as I started to transition, cutting in my hair and not being in church as much, I remember my mother sitting me outside and said, I just, I just need to know if you still believe in God. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, of all things, that's what you're going to ask. Um, I believe in God. I may not go and follow the tradition, but I, I truly believe me being comfortable goes back to I've never been a traditional person. And what I realized in growing up is that I needed to find God myself inside of my space, inside of where I am, and not just believing or holding to the fact that he only lives inside those walls. And if I don't follow the rules and regulations that are within the walls of a church, then God is not with me. Um, I need it there for myself. So when getting up and getting ready to go to church and things became stressful, I said, I just need to sit back and check myself. And that's exactly what I did. I did a lot of personal praying, alone praying, meditating, asking God to just let me know that there is a presence in my life that guides where I go. And I found a relationship spiritually that is amazing to me and has... Um, allowed me to continue to function and remain at peace and continue to seek wisdom and things of that nature. And I've let go of the guilt of feeling bad because I don't go to church every Sunday. And speaking about being untraditional, let us see your haircut. <laughs> and who cuts your hair? <clears throat> My barber is Elliot Clipper Hands Nelson. And um, he is at Chris Styles. He's at Chris Styles 500 South Main. And the great part about that is those that know me know that I'm an educator by trade. So when I'm off work, I have an opportunity to be expressive. So I've used my head and tattoos and things to show and be able to be expressive. So to be able to um, express myself and then still be able to go to work and be like professional is fun and um it's quality work very nicely done very nice what's one thing that people would be shocked to know about you um <laughs> that's kind of difficult because People that know me know that I do talk and that has gotten me and put me in so many strange situations because when I talk, I, I tend to share because I, in most instances, I try to be transparent. If I'm not talking to you or socializing with you, then I'm uncomfortable. True. And so I really don't choose to talk. So, um, um. I don't like to <laughs> I don't like to ask people for money. My nickname on my father's side of the family is Spanner Spoo. I have no idea why, but it is. And I think, well, as people may know this, though, I tried to sleep with my parents up until I was like in the sixth or seventh grade. I had really, really bad nightmares, like vivid 
nightmares. And I wasn't sleeping. So the safest place was in my mom and dad's room. But anyway. Makes sense. <laughs> Okay. What are some of your methods to remain calm and at peace? Um, one of the main things that I know that has truly helped me is that I talk to myself when I am, um, because I know I have a lot of conversations in my head and I'm an overthinker. When I feel myself about to get worked up, I try to have those conversations out loud and speaking so that I can hear what I'm thinking. Um, I've also gotten to the point where I acknowledge what I'm actually feeling, what's going on with me, and why do I feel this way? And, you know, juggling it over in, in my head, trying to make sure that I'm not being irrational and think I have those conversations because a lot of the time you have thoughts in your head, you let things build up, you have resentment or you have an issue with someone, you don't say anything, you wait on them. That causes a lot of stress. So with all that you have to do or that I have to do on a regular basis, raising children, working, things of that nature, I have to learn how to be still. I have to learn how to acknowledge my feelings and address them as they come. Um, I meditate and I pray a lot, asking for peace, requesting peace, you know, that it comes and that I can calm myself. I listen to positive affirmations often because being balanced and being calm is very important to me and nothing is worth my peace of mind. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Why did you decide to do a show like Relationship Rhetoric? Um, relationship rhetoric actually is one of the branches of a movement that I've had since about 2006 called Erology. I have always been interested in relationships and how people get along and how they got to know each other and what path did they take? How did they handle conflicts, things of that nature? And how do they enjoy themselves? What does it take to keep you ticking? You know, what happens at the end? It's just all of that has just always been interesting to me because it's always something that I've wanted. So relationship rhetoric is a part of a healing that I've created for myself. Um, how to talk to other people, get information, hear wonderful stories. It also helps to me for people to hear that love does exist, you know, if we stop trying to pattern ourselves after everyone else and take what we can take and sift out what we don't need, we could probably use some of those things to continue to have long, healthy relationships. So relationship rhetoric just opens up dialogue with people who are willing to share their experiences. Are you considered to be a relationship guru? <laughs> Uh, I don't consider myself as one, not by a long shot, because I'm still struggling on trying to have a happy, healthy, long-lasting relationship. Uh, that's just things that I desire. So it's driven out of passion. I don't try to answer relationship questions or things of that nature. I just try to share information given to me by the people. The show is more so about them than me. I just create the circumstances so that they can share. Well said, well said. How does hurt, betrayal, and disloyalty play a part in you choosing a new love, especially when you are a lover of love? Give those to me again. How does hurt, betrayal, and disloyalty play a part in you choosing a new love, especially when you are a lover of love? The only way I can answer that question is, is if you are a lover of love, love is one of those things that's long suffering. Um, not everybody that you love is going to love you. Not everybody that you love is going to love you the way that you want to be loved. 
So the most important thing is determining how it is you want to be loved. If these are the things that are happening, then you know that's not what you want. And if you are like me, it took me a long time to realize this is not what I want. But you have to be brave enough. And I remember when I was looking in the mirror, I can't remember what I was getting ready to do. But I remember having the conversation. And to me, it was like God spoke and was like, do you love yourself enough to do better than this? You know, so I started thinking and loving myself more. And again, being positive, having those conversations, writing things on my mirror that constantly remind me of who I am and what I want and what I don't want. The more you take the disloyalty, the distrust and things of that nature, you're not giving yourself an opportunity to know what it is you truly want. And our last question, you're always asking for the singles or whoever to describe their ideal mate. Describe your ideal man. <laughs> um, my ideal man um, has to make me feel... <clears throat> protected you know I've heard all my life that I'm strong I'm this you're so forceful you're so this and you know but in those instances where I want to be vulnerable I have to feel protected and that's more so with my emotions of course yes my physical but with my emotions and those opportunities where I can be transparent and be the true girl that I am um he has to be fun I like to laugh. I'm a very childlike person, so I like things that are nostalgic. Um, flexible. I need him to be flexible because I'm a flexible person. I change my mind so quickly. <clears throat> One minute I want to do something, I want to do something else. One minute I this is what I want to eat, then I change my mind. No, I don't think I just... I need the flexible, but I also need, <laughs> I also need or want the structure, you know? Okay. So you've changed your mind three times now. Can we make up our mind about what it is we're going to do? Um, I think being a Capricorn, I like structure, you know, surprises are beautiful, but when it comes to the core of what my man should be, that should not be able to be shaken. You know, when that comes to being faithful, being honest, um, being able to help take care of me in whatever capacity that is that I need. Um, extreme. I like extreme personalities because that gives a good balance, you know, sensitive, sweet, caring, but wild hood. <laughs> off the wall type but they balance each other and there's never too much of either one that's important because I feel like that's how my personality is um all that if, as long as you know he's a he's attractive I like my as I don't know if that's shallow or not but it's realistic I kind of like my breath to be taken away every now and then so when I look at you I'm like yes yes and yes so I guess that would be my ideal man not afraid to show that he loves me is important. I think that's it. I think that's it. Nice. Nice. Thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Um, the notion for today is more for me than most. The notion for today is more for me than most. Um, I'm very happy where I am in my life and the more that I evolve, the more that I grow, the more that I know. And one thing that I do know for sure, everywhere I am, there God is. Peace, love, and enlightenment. Love, sex, desire, drama, Lovers and the others, <laughs> and 
we talk about it all here on Relationship 